Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whenever it is, wherever you are, welcome to the Good Values Podcast. Now in this episode I'm speaking to someone who I've been friends with for I'd say about nine years. Now I've been friends with this person online, messaging with them, you know, talking back and forth a little bit. Um, I first came across them on Instagram when they do live videos and they were so good at... um, They'd be doing a piece at the time live and taking questions and then when some of the questions would require say a demonstration they just slide over a piece of paper do the demonstration on the piece of paper and then slide that away and continue with the piece so I just found their discipline really impressive and their personality so infectious and and really lovable now um, I've noticed when I was editing this episode how much I I'm kind of straight faced in a lot of it. To be honest, when I was watching this and editing it, I couldn't help but laugh. And I had just a beaming smile throughout the whole thing and just full of laughter because they're so lovable. Um, They were there for me when I really needed someone and I very much appreciate them. This is part one of my conversation with Andy Soto. Okay, would you mind introducing yourself for the audience, please? Hello, my name is Andy Soto, or Andy, (laughs) and I'm an illustrator based in Croatia. I'm from Panama. Yes. Excellent. Well, that is the most succinct introduction I've ever had. Usually people ramble on going, I mostly do this, I work with that, but you've kept it very short and sweet, which... Always precise. (laughs) Short (laughs) and sweet. (laughs) I won't hold you to that for the rest of your answers. But um, yeah, you were previously a guest on my first podcast, um, Studio Buddies, and it's a pleasure to have you on my new podcast, Good Values. Pleasure is mine. uh, Thank you for inviting me again. Oh, it's an honour. And this new iteration of the podcast was something I discussed with you at a time where I was just thinking about starting a new podcast. And it was thanks to you that you kind of supported me with the name, having a double meaning of good values for tonal values. Yes. Also for being a good person because of uh, certain turmoils in life sometimes can make you reevaluate your kind of uh, ethics and morals and, you know, your motivations. So I want to mm-hmm. thank you for that. And it's uh, really nice yeah. to see you again. <laughs> Likewise. Um, you are recently a mother. Yes. Yeah. I'm a mother now. Wow. <laughs> Congratulations. Good service. Um, it's been four weeks and it's been one of the this will sound kind of cliche. It's a life changing experience. <laughs> <laughs> and I've been enjoying every single minute of it because uh, I mean I had expectations about it. But now it's like, oh, wow, this is, this is something else. Mm. This is something else. I didn't expect it. So it's good. It's good to have expectations, but then I have, I have a little space for surprisings, yeah. surprises. And I've been enjoying it way too much. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. That's lovely. Yeah. So uh, how has motherhood affected your art making or thinking process in, in making art? uh first the first three months were hell i mean i couldn't do anything because you know um they warned me about the the whole being nauseous and stuff so it was really difficult for me to focus on my work um they usually say like oh if you eat some certain kind of stuff you will get nauseous i was like breathing like what (laughs) all the time for three months it was horrible that that's why i thought i was gonna have a girl and and then we found out it was going to be a boy. I was like, ah, and then I got all excited and all the nauseous disappeared in the fourth month. And, and then I started feeling this kind of, a, it felt like waves of ideas, but the craziest ideas. And I had the craziest dreams. I was like, baby, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> this is creepy. I mean, I thought I had creepy ideas. I thought I was exploring, you know, dark themes until I got pregnant. 
I was like, okay, these ideas are kind of extreme. Yeah. I had to work around them. And then in the fifth and sixth month, it got even, you know, it was really, really dense. Yeah. And I was like, I cannot even put them on paper because they are so complex. So I have to write them down. Everything I, 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 I was dreaming, and everything I was, you know, coming out like, what is this? I mean, mm. baby, you're supposed to be cute and stuff. <laughs> I'm becoming a mother, not a kind of a this weird, dark theme thing. Yeah. And I was like, thank you, baby, for the great ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out, to, you know, find the time to execute all those ideas. But then the eighth month came and I was like, baby we have to we gotta get ready we have to stop working and then when I stopped working I was uh two weeks away from giving birth wow and craziest ideas started coming out I was like what am I gonna do with this so I waited to give birth I saw him for the first time I'm like this cute cabbage patch kit thing all pink and stuff this huge chick like oh he looks like me he looks like his father too yeah. he looks like nobody like oh this is so abstract and then I started experiencing you know being uh, like uh, more aware of life and everything around me and around him I'm like ah I need to draw <laughs> stuff I need to do something so it's been four weeks And I think I'm finally ready to, you know, tackle the whole breastfeeding and taking care of him and drawing at the same time. And since he's such a gentleman, he allows me to sleep. He allows us to sleep. I mean, he's a, such a great baby. Um, I'm well rested. You mm -hmm. know, I, I do have like bags under my eyes, but I've, I've had bags under my eyes the ent my entire life. <laughs> so, <laughs> Uh, I'm ready to tackle those ideas and it will be, it has been like really, really amazing. I mean, I see him every day. I cry like, oh, he's so perfect. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he eats all the time. Oh, he cries like a little bit. Like, <laughs> he, he sounds like a little dinosaur. <laughs> But the most important thing is that he allows me to rest and he gives me like great ideas. So mm -hmm. being a mother is like, The transition was kind of, uh, you know, very smooth. Yeah. For now. Because every, everybody says, like, for now. Yeah. You're resting now. <laughs> But the flow of ideas that he has given me and the whole motherhood thing, it's not the common, like, you know, like, ah, tender. And yeah. Ideas. No. Oh, no. <laughs> it's dense. It's really dense. It's really dark. Yeah. Not in a bad way, you know. I mean, it's, it, those are great ideas. They explore things that I really like. And I don't know. Maybe uh, uh, when I'm ready and I, I execute them, I will show to the world, like, oh, this is, this is Anta's ideas that he gave them to me as a gift. Yeah. So it's cute. Like, oh, that's my baby. Well, I did. Like it's kind of a, it feels like a kind of a Wednesday Adam thing. Like, ah, oh, he, he gave me all the, these dark ideas. Thank you, baby. <laughs> it feels like that. So, like, yeah, it's been great. It's been well, great. I noticed that in November you had to, you know, could you put a blurb underneath your art that you post? And there'd be kind of a death theme in November that you had where it was almost death was almost in every post that I saw where I was like, these, these quotes are quite, you know, specifically kind of themed towards reflection on death and I yeah. wonder because I looked and you've got somewhere let's see um these are more recent ones where there it says there's too much blood in my system of poison was one uh this is not the November this is more recent maybe my true yeah. self is just coming out maybe everyone is evil um I have seen birth and death but had thought they were different Maybe the singularity happened years ago and we were left behind. And the soul is cured of its maladies by certain incantations. So it's all kind of very... Uh, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a bunch of quotes. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, was, uh, I was enjoying this podcast called Creepy. 
And some of the stories I felt like they were reaching out to me. I, I heard them before, mm. but this time it was different. I mean, uh, I was like, um, you know, everything was tied to my solo show in Haven Gallery because it was kind of theme into the void and the whole theme, it was about death and rebirth and birth and becoming a mother. And, you know, inspired on the loss of one of my cats, you know, Shura, yeah. uh, he, he meant something like he was huge in my life. And, you know, it was, it, it's kind of funny because when, when he, he died last year, it, this year, it was four days after, you know, the, the anniversary of Shuda's death. Mm. So I gave birth, like, ah, Shuda passed away on March the 2nd, and Ante was born in March 6th. Yeah. I was like, ah. So everything is kind of connected, because my, my other cat, Beta, mm. he passed away on February, two years ago. Yeah. And I was like, every time I was, you know, I was very uh, emotional, obviously. Yeah. Very pregnant and very emotional. Yeah. I was thinking about death even more. Yeah. And but I I started seeing it not as a bad thing. Mm. It's like a it started to the whole concept started to change. It's like now I'm giving birth to somebody that he didn't know, even know he existed before. And he will find out later that his birth uh, also came with, with with lots of stuff. I'm not I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to explain it. I mean, yeah. um, it's like s something ceased to exist, and then he came he came to life like ah, and it's kind of a I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> That's well, why I always try to to find words from other people that that explain what I'm feeling. And the whole death and birth is the same. Mm. It's actually the same. But I don't know how to explain it. And everything is tied. I mean, Ante will grow up knowing about Shuda. Mm. He will never see him. But he, he, I will create kind of a story about him. Yeah. It's, it will be like, a, uh, in Spanish, it's called Fabula. Uh, it's a short story. Yeah, like a fairy tale. Um, or exactly. Yeah. And he will always be present. So, yeah. Sorry, I'm getting all teared up again. Uh -huh. uh, so, Shura will never cease to exist, you know? Yeah. It will become like a story. So, uh, I'm becoming so emotional. Uh -huh. I'm sorry. <laughs> you posted recently. But, yeah, it's kind, of, but it's kind of, it, it, it's about that. I mean, yeah. that, that's why it's so difficult for me to say it. That's why uh, uh, for my solo show, there was a bunch of flowers. It was like a memoir of my previous previous life. Like I'm saying goodbye to my previous life. I'm welcoming yeah. this one. And it, 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 it was really rewarding, actually, to finally not being afraid of death. Yeah. You know, because I was always afraid of it. And now it's like, hey. You won't cease to exist, actually. <laughs> yeah, there will be somebody that will talk about you and you will you will exist forever yeah. as a tale or as a painting or as an illustration or and people will see you and they will make interpretations of you and you will become a new person. Mm -hmm. So basically you will stop evolving without existing. So your essence will still be there. So that's why it was so important for me to try to uh, find the correct quotes for those mm. to explain what I had in my mind. And when I was listening to this podcast, all these ideas were coming out like I will pause the podcast, write it down. Like I really like this. Yeah. And then I will continue. And the singularity one, I, I mean, it was a sci-fi uh, story. Yeah. I really like those that, you know, cosmic horror. Mm -hmm. beautiful and i really felt it like what well, what if what if <laughs> this happened and we, we only have like a few seconds left yeah we'll be worth it uh, are you are you enjoying your life uh are you doing are you doing good you're doing good mm. but not good like i'm doing great no 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 
Are you treating people well? Are you treating people with respect? Is it worth it? I mean, is your life worth it? I mean, you're not just here to be good for you. You're, you're helping other people yeah. or you're transcending. Mm. If you cease to exist now, it will yeah. be worth it. I mean, if everything was, you were, you were doing great yeah. to other people and yourself. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> so I, think, I think I'm doing great, actually. Yeah. That's uh, really yeah, great. yeah. I, I try to make this abstract uh, subject uh, using other people's quotes. Yeah. And it worked. And after those quotes, I started finding, you know, the lamentations uh, quotes from the Bible. No, oh, yeah. You know, I'm I'm an atheist, hmm. but I love Bible quotes. I mean, yeah. it sometimes it's really like, whoa, this is <laughs> this is really good. This is what I, like how I feel. Yeah. And the lamentations were basically, you know, inspired on the emotions of Judah's death. But also lamentations about my, you know, the life that I'm leaving behind. Mm. I'm not leaving behind because I'm not stopping being me because I'm yeah. a mother now. But there are some stuff that I won't be able to do just like, <laughs> <laughs> just leave everything behind and go because I, I have a child now. Yeah. Now I go everywhere with him. Like, <laughs> yeah. But it was kind of a lamentation. It, it sounds kind of heavy. But it's not. No. You know, that, that, that's how I feel it. So, yeah, I stopped being afraid of death, finally. So <laughs> that's a good thing. Yeah. That's a good thing because it usually it, it, it gave me anxiety because I will be like working like, what if I die now? And I will <laughs> stare at nothing and being like depressed and stuff all the time. But now it's like, it's not so bad, actually. <laughs> That's good. I don't want it to hurt, though. <laughs> I don't want it to hurt. I was thinking but... the actual death part, I don't think, scares me. I think it's the dying part that I'm concerned yeah. about is how how you reach your end as opposed to exactly. what the end is like. You know, so. But then, and then you start appreciating life like uh, there's so many things. This could be sound like so traumatic, but you could have like, Let's say an example, a really creepy example, like an aneurysm. Yeah. Then you go and you don't, nothing happened. Yeah. I mean, you you like, what? Yeah. Shows off. That's it. Lights yeah. off. That's yeah. it. And then <clears throat> I was like, actually, I'm not afraid anymore. Mm. I'm not afraid anymore. I mean, what if? And then I, I think about it. I mean, I, uh, my work would be there to talk about my life. And people will make interpretations. So, yeah. and that's cool. That's really cool. Yeah, absolutely. Or like, yeah, I'll become a story. <laughs> like, uh, imagine it. Like, people will find out about your work years later. The way I found out about so many other artists from Europe. Yeah. Like, oh my God. And then, like, this guy existed. Yeah. This guy was that. Yeah. This guy's amazing. And I found out 200 years later. Yeah. I have this weird connection with artists like that, that I don't want to will them back into existence. I really much appreciate their of their time. And that can echo into the future so strongly that we can hear and feel and see through their eyes what they were experiencing in their artwork. Exactly. Exactly. And that happened... I started, you know, studying backgrounds and doing, you know, drawing trees and stuff. And then I found out about Ivan Shishkin. It's a Russian guy. Okay. And it's, it's really? something else. Like, yeah. uh, he was from 200 years ago. Yeah. I'm like, this guy, whoa. They look like hyper-realism uh, drawings with uh, oils and watercolors and whatever. Wow. I don't even I don't even care about the technique. I mean, the looks of the the entire backgrounds. We could touch only trees. Wow. And backgrounds and stuff like ah, <laughs> like European forests and stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, I want to have the patience he had yeah. <laughs> to draw trees and stuff. And I, I don't even know the size or the technique or uh, 
or anything about those drawings or the paintings, but every time I see them, they it moves something inside me. Like, mm. oh my god, it's yeah. it's same as Alphonse Mucha. I yeah. see his work, and I'm like, oof, yeah, man, this is this is this is something else, yeah. and. The same as other artists. I mean, I mean, I've seen other artists work, and then you will see, for example, um, see, I just forgot the name of the artist. Uh, the Kiss, you know, the Kiss. How's it called? What is this guy? He's eh, 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 eh. no, it's not Gustav Doré. Gustav Doré is something else. I'll edit this. Don't worry. So it'll seem seamless. It's okay. <laughs> this this painting is really huge. Everybody does their you know their take on that painting, and then. I found out he made backgrounds as well. And I was like, dude, this guy is, this guy's work, that it's not the kiss. Yeah. It's better. <laughs> For yeah. me, it's even better. I'm like, why does he, that, that everybody looks at those paintings and they stop seeing the other part of their work. Mm. And he, he even has like paintings of chickens and sunflowers. And stuff like that. Mm. And he's pretty amazing. Yeah. And I'm like, and everybody's looking at the kiss. It's a, it's a, it's it's like it's two figures and one of holding it like this. Oh, uh, you're talking about I think I know um I always the, confuse Edvard the Monk. names. Not, not Edvard Monk, no. Where is no. it? Um, Gustav Klimt. Clint, well done. Of course, yeah. There you go. I mean, I'm like, yeah, Gustav. Klimt. Gustav, it's not Gustav Dore. It's Gustav something. There you go, Klimt. He his landscapes are fantastic. I love his. Um, I know, I so know, good. and and people like they're always seeing the same painting. So, yeah. I I I hope I hope people will say the same thing yeah. with my work. Yeah. Uh, they see the subjects and the flowers, but then they will discover that my other part of my work. I mean, it's my it's my fault that people don't see it because I don't post it. <laughs> <laughs> someday I will. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, is your other work? Is it is it landscape or what? What's your other it's work? Landscape. Is it? It's landscape with bunch of characters and architecture and houses and castles and stuff. Where can we find it? Nowhere, because I haven't posted. <laughs> <No. laughs> I mean, it's it's it, those are commissions, and even though the owners they say like you can post them, like like I don't want to, I'm not ready. Mm. I I want people to see it, but you know I want to find the proper way to post them because they are so big. Yeah, because it's not like the usual uh, small format that I do. You know, these are big pieces. Yeah, and I want to find a proper way to share them that it's not Instagram. You know, because I've been building my website for five years <laughs> <laughs> it's in the it's you know it's on the draft thing yeah so but i want people to see it I, w- I want people to see my botanical studies and all the things that you don't see often i also do portraits of animals yeah so there's a bunch of stuff that i i want people to see but i'm not ready to share it yet oh. but I don't want to be stuck on the same, you know, subject with flowers and yeah. and studies about death and studies yeah. about darkness and my relationship with darkness and emotions and stuff. So, yeah, good times. The hidden world. <laughs> I don't even remember the question anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was just how is pregnancy affected your process and Pregnant, yeah, man, it's a thing. What would it's you tell your, your kind of your pre-pregnancy self if you could go back and tell yourself something before you became pregnant, before you had a child, what would you go back and say to yourself? Write everything down. Really? That's what it. The process? Write everything down because you will forget. Yeah. You will forget. I'll be like in a room. You know, it happens when you go through doors. Yeah. Like I was going to do something like. Yeah. And every time you go through a door or something like that, you'll forget yeah no i will exist and i will forget everything so or like i had a great idea oh, i know the <laughs> i i i want to have a nice cream now <laughs> and then I will go like, Ooh. it felt great actually it felt great yeah. to forget stuff but then i will remember like oh no and i will panic <laughs> but i i learned to take notes so, yeah and i have notes everywhere in the house now like little post-its like oh, this is how you make coffee 
Yeah. Forget. <laughs> This is how you have to take your your, your vitamins, and it's <laughs> everywhere. I mean, ha I have sticky notes everywhere. It's it's so funny, but yeah, that, that would be the only thing. Like, hey, remember, remember. I remember, thought you'd be like, remember. you're gonna turn out like Memento, that film with the tattoos all over the arms, just so that you can remember what happens. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, oh wow. I'm like, why did I write that? Tattoo. And I will forget why. Like, <laughs> yeah. oh no, I have to look on all the sticky notes. Yeah. But yeah, that 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 thing. I, I think that will be the the one of the things, and the other one is this too shall pass because yeah. sometimes I will feel like really really bad. Like, oh no, this nausea thing. I thought I was gonna like, ah, oh, I won't be yeah. able to endure this thing. But then we discover peppermint tea, and everything will be oh. better. Nice. But you, you could only have one cup a day. Like, oh, oh. I, I better feel better <laughs> after this cup of tea. Yeah. But yeah, I think that will be the two things. Mm. Write everything down and these two shall pass. Excellent. But, That's great yeah. advice. Oh, lovely. I, I know. It applies for every, with everything. <laughs> do, you practice, do you practice mindfulness? Because you seem like someone It's so hard. Yeah, I find yeah. it so hard. I, I used to, when I was doing yoga and stuff, meditating and stuff, like, ah, I will be yeah. so sad. But now it's like, actually, I'm kind of mindful all the time. It yeah. feels kind of heavy because I'm aware of everything now. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can see everything. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that, that will count as I'm being mindful <laughs> all the time. <laughs> It kind of it tires me, but yeah, it it, it it allows you to see life in a different way. Like mm. it's not only like uh, for example, yesterday, last night actually, it was raining, and there was a lamppost. There's a lamppost outside, and I will get, I'll be like staring at the lamppost, like oh wow, look, it's raining. Oh look at the drops. Oh look at the light. Oh look at the whole contrast. Oh wow, this is so great. <laughs> if I take a picture, then I have to draw it. <laughs> and what if what if the, this scene will won't replicate in the future? So I have to stare at it and enjoy it. <laughs> Multiply that the entire twenty four hours. Yeah. It's, all the time like oh look at the flowers but then if i draw a flower the flower takes so long to grow so i can yeah. see it the thought process <laughs> of everything now it's like that <laughs> i see my child like like oh he's growing so fast and he oh he's fussing oh no and maybe he has gas maybe he has to do this <laughs> and then i have to feed him like, but he, he will feel better but what if i go outside and take him he, the sun the sun will make him feel good it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so tired at the end of the day. I go to sleep like, ah, I go through the bed like, Psh. but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful like mm. all the time now. Yeah. I, 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 even when I'm breathing like, Psh, I breathe better now. <laughs> yeah. Stuff like that. Yeah. I can feel the entire practice now like, ah, oh, uh, what am I feeling? Yes. I feel it anxious. The only thing I have to do is breathe, and I start breathing. Mm. I'm a different person now. Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Before I was like, I'm anxious, but I don't know what to do. <laughs> now I'm mindful. Now I know how to breathe. Well, yeah, because I do it for. It's going to sound insignificant, but I do it for really small sensations. So, for example, oh. whilst we've been talking, I've had a tickle on that part of my nose and a tickle on the back of my head and it makes me want to scratch it. And instead I just go, let part of my brain acknowledge that sensation whilst I just, I won't focus on it. I'll be obviously thinking about the conversation, but I'll just remember that I don't have to, oh, no. you know, I can scratch. Oh throat. no. If it, if it itches, <laughs> I will scratch. I'm really? sorry. I was like, Oh, sorry. I was like, ah, oh, yeah. Like, I don't, I don't care anymore. I mean, I get ticks too. Like, uh, my eye will start moving like that. I'm like, it will go away by itself. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, I mean, it's not insignificant. I mean, it, you're training your brain. We all do that. In a that's way. what reminded me of it is when you said this too shall pass. It's kind of, it's a thought process of the more importance you put on something, the more you can't stand but have to address it. Whereas sometimes if you just go, that's a weird little tickling sensation, but I don't want it to 
you know, I don't want to be on a call and be like that all the time and be like, you know, scratching. And I think it's just, it's all things that go away. It only lasts for a very short period of time and then it'll yeah. disappear. I mean, and also uh, uh, when you're like that mindful, you're, you start doing things all the time. Like, yeah. oh, when am I saying, uh, am I going to the right direction? Oh, my head looks weird. I'm, I have to arrange it. Hmm. it. It's kind of an ADHD thing. Yeah. But- <laughs> But and then like ah oh, you have to change your post posture oh no stand up <laughs> oh stretch your back unclench your jaw oh, no, it's all the time but it's a good thing it's a good thing to address stuff that you can you know you can fix right away yeah and if you think that you have to work around it mm. and it works for you you do it but if I have a niche you will see me like. <laughs> I don't care anymore. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> I learned to do it when I was too short, not to scratch. <laughs> yeah, but you know, if you're if you're ever modeling, I mean, I've done it when I was modeling for an art group, and you'd have to sit very still, and then you'd have a tickle or you'd have a you know a pain, and I learned to kind of go just now think about the pain and think about the tickle and where it's coming from, and what the actual sensation is because at first you just feel it and then you go ah scratch it or ah oh, in my artwork but if you just think about what it feels like it will transform and go it's really strange becomes really quite trippy and turns it's into a, it's a else. weird it's a weird feeling i mean uh i can get like really distracted that's why i have to address everything like right away <laughs> but i i don't go like ah no <laughs> like all desperate but yeah if it's if it's about my post uh, or I'm clenching my jaw, I just address it right away. <laughs> but if it's something like, oh, my arm is tingling, I'll be like, oh, I don't care anymore. If, every, if somebody's looking or anything. Uh, yeah. and besides, I'm always like moving and stuff. So <laughs> people don't notice. <laughs> well, oh, so much. <laughs> to take a complete left turn, last time I spoke to you, one of the films that we mentioned, one of the films that you were excited about at the time was Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. That's something that you mentioned in the podcast that we had yeah. a year ago. It feels like years ago, but yeah. And it's now just won seven Oscars, which I'm glad that it's, you know, been rewarded for. I it. know. It's not, it's not, it's not the usual stuff like a Titanic thing or no. an Avatar thing. <laughs> Finally, they're acknowledging other people's work. And it's yeah. Americans say. Yeah, non white actors in a non English language. People are discovering language. other yeah. languages as well. Like you, you, can, you can turn on the subtitles, nothing will yeah. happen. It won't, it won't <laughs> hurt you to read a little bit. <laughs> Same as the parasite thing. I think the director oh, mentioned something amazing. like that. Like, oh, you can turn on the subtitles, <laughs> yeah. and you can watch a whole bunch of movies. <laughs> yeah, Bong Joon Ho, amazing. That's his. Uh, that, that movie, that, that movie. But then I watched some other movies that really, really got into me, and one of them is yeah. called Finlandia. Oh, I've not heard of that. Finlandia. Finlandia. It's on Netflix, and I yeah. watched it, and I, I, I became so emotional. Like, ah, yeah. people have to watch this because it's in Spanish, and and it has a um, dialect from Oaxaca in Mexico that I never heard before. It's beautiful, mm. but then with this whole thing, like uh, a foreign movie winning Oscars will open windows and doors for other people's work and I wish people would, would watch Finlandia it's such a beautiful film wow, wow. it's so one. emotional and it, it addresses stuff like really really heavy stuff uh, but it's the photography is so beautiful the whole culture thing and how they portrayed every every subject in the movie it's like oof. yeah and it reminded me from well, I mean uh, I'm Latin American as well. It's like don't forget you live in Europe now. Yeah, but you're Latin American. <laughs> don't forget. <laughs> yeah, I'm Latin American. <laughs> Remember your roots. <laughs> Remember your roots. Like you have to celebrate those things. Yeah, and yeah, I mean I'm learning how to watch other kinds of movie as well so <laughs> and this this one is a kind of an independent one uh from a director i've never seen before okay. but it's such a beautiful film mm. and yeah 
Uh, sorry, I saw a little hair flow and floating around. Hey, that's okay. <laughs> ah, it's a beautiful yeah, film. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Mindfulness about the hair floating around. <laughs> okay, that is part one done. Now, I love the fact that we covered her um, new enter entrance into motherhood and how that has affected her uh, creative side. Um, I love how much energy she always injects into the conversation. She's always the best guest. You ask her one question and you've got, you know, a heck of a, a lot of information and just pure sincerity in, in sharing her experience. Um, an amazing artist. I loved putting the artwork throughout. I hope you enjoyed it. Part two is going to be next week. So tune in for that. Support Andy on her social media. I'm going to put links in the description of this video she's an amazing artist she really deserves your support she's so generous and uh, i really want to see her um, get the support of as wide an audience as possible if you can support this channel i'd really appreciate that as well by leaving a like or a comment down below subscribing to the channel would be fantastic ring the notification bell if you subscribe so that you get all of the notifications because i upload art videos tutorials podcasts and um several different types of videos. Sometimes I do kind of vlog videos as well. Um, share this with friends and family. I really want the channel to grow and with your help it will. But I appreciate you watching. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next episode.